Hi, I'm Duncan Moss, and I'd like to welcome you to my latest video blog. Uh, because it's now so close to Christmas, I thought it was only right and proper that having waffled on about the various things that I I know and love, like the Beatles, uh, Jerry Anderson, um, and other things, that I spoke about one of the most important uh, things in my life. And that's Jesus. Um, I'm not here to ram Christianity down anybody's throats, uh, but really just to give my own personal reflections about Jesus through my life. And basically, he is the reason why we have Christmas, whether we have a faith or not. Uh, but I hope everyone will have a great Christmas. Well, whatever faith they are, um, Jesus is for everybody. And uh, my my first uh, real experience of Jesus was when I was four. Uh, I went to a school called Grantchester House. This is 1967. Uh, the, 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 there'd just been the Summer of Love, uh, which I didn't know too much about. We were just, uh, the pirate stations were being dismantled, which I was very excited about because I didn't really know what they were, but anything to do with pirate uh, stirred up the excitement in me. Uh, and we had a, I was in the nursery, I was four. I, uh, lovely, lovely teacher, Mrs. Henry, taught us a song uh, within a few days of us being at the school. Uh, Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. He looks down from heaven to see us shine, you in your small corner and I in mine. And and this was really the first time that I can remember Christmas properly. Um, it had a little advent calendar, which when you turn the handle, the, 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 uh, the characters in the nativity play all moved, which I found fascinating. And we were treated, I was treated to the, the uh, that was us in the nursery to a a play uh with uh glove puppets sort of made out of lolly sticks uh from the kindergarten the the, the school of uh, the class above us um th that was the, the the beginning uh of it and the next year when i was a little bit more learning a little bit more about uh things uh, I learned more about uh, Jesus as Christmas uh, of 1968 was was coming up, and I learned about Herod, um, who he was, and the fact that uh, he asked the wise men uh, to uh, make a careful search for uh, the baby uh who had been born uh who was a new king so that he could go and worship him uh with the plans uh to kill him and when uh he the wise men tripped him and uh went back to Kurt by another another route uh, he ordered all the the children be the two uh two is it two and below uh, to be killed uh by his men and at this time, I was watching a lot of TV, uh, a lot of TV heroes I had. Uh, some went round in uh, rockets, some um, went round on horses. Range Rider and Casey Jones, Captain Scarlet, uh, Robinson Crusoe, um, loads of heroes that I had. Um, I'm the last probably generation to remember the Kiddie Weston. Anyhow, I was sure that uh, somebody was going to come uh, and rescue the children, foiling Herod's plan, arriving as all good heroes did in the nick of time. But when my friend Gillian, who was a couple of years above me, said, no, uh, Duncan, uh, Herod did succeed in killing the children. And then Miss Searle, my teacher confirmed that that was right well i was uh disillusioned at the age of five and a half now even the beatles white album which i, I didn't actually know it had been released wasn't enough 
I was absolutely gobsmacked and very, very uh, not quite sure what was going on. Uh, and of course, that that the murdering of the innocents uh, in uh, Bethlehem was really the uh, I suppose the dumb blame of its day. Uh, and it's very sad, but it, it, it just shows the dangerous world that Jesus was was born into. Um, we have to, whilst we celebrate, and all, many, many of us are, are having a great time, what happens on, we have to reflect, it's in, to reflect on uh, Joseph and Mary. They were, they were very young. Um, they, um, Joseph almost divorced Mary when uh, he found she was pregnant um, and till an angel uh, in a dream told him not to worry, everything was going to be okay and that uh, he was to take Mary as his wife, which he did and I think that, that it was all done very, very quietly and all there was no a stigma attached to Jesus, as there would have been for anyone who was born out of wedlock at that time. I think it was all settled very quietly, and everybody um, was quite um, happy that uh, Jesus was a wedding baby uh, when he came along. Uh, but before he appeared, well, they had a pretty nasty uh, journey to make to um, Bethlehem, uh, where they were to be uh, the, the census that Augustus Caesar had I think, uh, uh, commissioned. Uh, they think they had a donkey. Um, and Mary would have been heavily pregnant at the time. And really to go on a long journey like that was the last thing you wanted to do uh, <laughs> if you were pregnant. And uh, we presume that, that Mary rode on the donkey. Um, kind of been comfortable, but... Uh, and uh, then there's a, a way, apparently, when you get to Bethlehem, where you have to walk up this very steep slope, and and you have to dismount, any riders have to dismount, and uh, it would be had been very, very difficult uh, for them. Um, absolute, very, very worrying when they couldn't find a place uh, to stay. Everybody, everywhere was full up. Um, uh, I know some people who uh, think the innkeeper behaved disgracefully and other people who think that he was a hero. Well, I think he was a hero because he uh, found Joseph and Mary a stable. OK, not the cleanest place. And he probably made it as clean as he possibly could. But at least it was quiet. And that's what uh, Mary needed. And uh, we have uh, uh, Jesus was born. Uh, according to historians, it's uh, I think six BC that Jesus was born. That's when uh, a morning star appeared over Palestine for several days, uh, proclaiming the birth of a king, and it was uh, Jupiter. Astronomers know that it was Jupiter uh, shining in the sky as a morning star. Um, which is fantastic because for many Christians, uh, the the star of David is uh, no more real than the fairy that often fits on the Christmas tree. But it it was a real event, and uh, well, we uh, uh, Jesus is born, and he's just a baby, uh, a helpless little baby just relying on his mum for, for his milk and keep warm. Um, some people tend to think of him as some kind of super baby, uh, a bit like in, uh, what's that film? Is it Look Who's Talking? That ghastly movie with a baby who can sort of talk and is ultra intelligent and can just... Um, Jesus, he, he wasn't sitting in his little manger looking up at the, uh, the rafters of the stable and saying oh, to his heavenly father, oh, dad, you've really pushed the boat out this time, haven't you? Uh, uh, I was hoping for the Savoy Hotel or, or something. It, uh, 
you know, a stable. Uh, you can take this humility stuff too far, Dad. Um, he he was just a helpless babe. Uh, and he was visited by the shepherds. And the way we do the nativity play, it's quite hysterical because we, uh, the way it's presented is that um, Mary's just got rid of the shepherds uh, and then along come the wise men, uh, <laughs> you know, another knock at the door. Uh, and it's not quite the way because uh, Jesus was a tiny baby when um, the shepherds met him. Uh, when the wise men met him, he was a, little, a bit more older, maybe 18 months, a toddler. Um, and, uh, we've there's the story, of course, of Simeon and uh, meeting Jesus uh, a few days after his birth, and had been promised he'd see Israel's salvation, and then he tells uh, Mary that her sorrow, like a sharp sword, shall penetrate, shall pierce your heart, referring, of course, to Jesus' crucifixion, and. Uh, of course, the wise men, they bring him gold, frankincense and myrrh. Gold, a gift fit for a king. Um, frankincense, an incense that you could, uh, that you burnt on the altar uh, uh, for, for, a, for God. And myrrh, uh, a, bit, a bit of spice to uh, uh, put on uh, his body when he died. Um and I, I appeared in a nativity play as a shepherd when I was six, uh, I think it was, at Grantchester House. And uh, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Watson, she was a really God-fearing lady. Uh, and uh, Mr. Irving, my headmaster, when I went to Shrewsbury House, he was a God-fearing man as well. And uh, I, I, I respected Jesus, but I didn't really... Um, that looked to him as the most important thing in my my, my life at all. Like most of us, I uh, didn't. I think uh, that that happened when I was fourteen. When I was I was uh, very very lonely and uh, uh, and very unhappy. And uh, I was uh, I came uh, went down to a Christian youth group, uh, open circle in Surbiton when I was four, fourteen. And that's where I, uh, about 18 months later, um, I became a Christian. Um, I've, we, we hear the stories, don't we, in, in, the, in church and on TV, uh, all, uh, many, many, many times. Uh, but I often like to think outside the box about it all. For example, um, when uh, we don't know really very much about Jesus, what uh, apart from the Christmas story, as as he grew up, we only have the story of him uh, uh, getting uh, separated from his parents' uh, party uh, when I think they'd gone uh, to Jerusalem uh, for a festival. Uh, I think it was Jerusalem. Give me if I'm right, if I'm wrong, and uh, they they hunt for him for. Uh, I think for on the third day they find him, uh, and he's in the temple uh, at the age of nine, uh, chatting away to the uh, the priests and uh, and and the other uh, uh, staff in the temple, and all of them are amazed at, at what he what he's saying. Um, how did what did he do during the night time when he was? Uh, Oh, I did. I perhaps the priests put him up up somewhere, but uh, I, I don't think they would have let him uh, go out on the town or anything like that. Uh, um, he was only nine, nine uh, and uh, of course he says to his mother and father when they scold him, uh, "Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house?" And they 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 weren't quite sure what he was talking about. Um, of course. Uh, uh, God was was uh, Jesus' uh, dad. Um, Joseph was also uh, Jesus' dad. He, Joseph was uh, Jesus' earthly father. And I presume he became an apprentice uh, with his dad uh, in his dad's workshop, being a carpenter. And, um, and I think 
uh, what what happened during these years the tw- before he he started his ministry at the age of 30 um what did he do there's, there's a legend he came to britain uh, i don't know whether that's true or not i think it's probably sort of fabrication but what did he get up to did he have friends um he must have done um what what did he get up to during those years? Uh, we don't know. And his ministry. Uh, what we've got in the Bible would take up probably about three weeks. But he, his ministry went for three years. What other adventures did he have? And his disciples. What did they get up to? Um, you can only you can only uh, 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 imagine, can't you? Um, He was clearly a man who was very remarkable, whether you believe in uh, he was the son of God or not. Um, He had the right words to say to uh, the Pharisees when they surrounded him. Often reminds me of sort of Humphrey Bogart sitting in a bar and the bad guys surround him. And then and Jesus had the right words to say in some difficult times um he didn't get married um that was uh, one of the big uh, things that the film the last temptation of christ explored um not a uh, a film that a lot of people probably want to watch although it was made with sincerity um uh, jesus is um put uh, he goes to the wedding at Cani and uh, and he danced um he wasn't uh, it wasn't his father's will that he would be married himself but he went to a wedding um at Cani he laughed he danced um he had a good time and he turned uh, the wine uh sorry <laughs> he turned the water into wine i.e. something flat into something uh, bubbly and uh, full of life, uh, not the other way around. So it was the water into wine. Uh, unfortunately, some Christians turn the very good at turning the wine back into water. Uh, um, but Jesus knew how to have a good time, uh, and uh, we the the. Time went when he 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 goes to for his uh, uh, to his own village. Uh, you think they would have been really proud of him, you know? It's uh, oh, it's uh, the uh, the carpenter's son from down the road. Oh, he's doing all these wonderful things. Ah, we've got one of his tables upstairs. Yeah, we'll look after that. It'll be worth a bit in a few years' time. Uh, but they said, no, it's the carpenter's son. Because <laughs> uh, they, they, they just wanted, they wanted glitz and tints, razzmatazz, and uh, they wanted, uh, and Jesus was a humble man. And on that day, it says he could only uh, uh, place his hands on a few sick, and, uh, and he was appalled at their lack of faith. Uh, prophet without honour in your own tap. Um, well, uh, Jesus, of course, um, was crucified um, in the, arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, where um, Peter and a couple of other disciples decided to, to buy swords because they knew perhaps the, the things were going to get dicey. And it's, you can imagine Peter, he probably had never, the disciple, he'd never had a sword in his life, held a sword in his life probably, and you can, can picture him just swinging it really clumsily, and he cuts the uh, the servants of the high priests, uh, cuts his ear off, and, and Jesus uh, heals the high priest a, a servant. I wonder what the servant must have thought about all this. Did he, did he think... Uh, it must have had some effect on him and uh, we know that he was he, he he was crucified 
Um, he bra- he was very brave when he uh, went up in, in front of Pilate, and he well you, you read read the gospel he was very brave he went to then he was sent to herod this is not the herod that when he was a baby this is uh i think his son his second son um and uh, he was crucified and uh that's the stumbling block um he was crucified uh it says to pay the the price of all our sins uh by being the sacrificial lamb uh the passover lamb uh the the body the bones were never broken uh it was instructed that uh, when the it was the lamb was being carved for the meal they had to be very careful not to break the bones and jesus's bones on the cross they weren't broken uh because he died uh before the other two criminals so he didn't need they didn't need to break his his legs um now, uh, it says that in uh, on the third day he rose again. Uh, now, this is this is the whole stumbling block of, of, of Christianity. Um, did, as some people claim, the disciples decide to play a massive joke on uh, the world and say, "Let's pretend that he came back." Uh, oh, what a great idea! We can we can do that. Um, they were frightened rabbits the last thing after what had happened seeing Jesus um, being arrested and crucified the last thing they would have been thinking about was let's play a joke on society they were all probably just drifting back into their uh, their previous jobs and hoping that the authorities would uh, would not pursue them or, or just turn a blind eye um, uh, but uh, it says that uh, Jesus rose uh, spiritually and also rose physically uh, so was he just a nice guy who ended up uh, coming to a to a sticky end as most nice guys do see to, in this world of ours or was he God working a miraculous um um event so that the human race uh could be brought back into a relationship with god um some of you notice i have a thunderbirds t-shirt i'm a massive thunderbirds fan um the tracy brothers with their remarkable craft going off on rescue missions well uh sending jesus to the earth well, this rescue mission from God uh, even put the Tracy brothers in the shade. Um, I, as far as I'm concerned, Jesus did rise from the dead and uh, he paid the price for my sins. Um, I'm a wretched person, um, but I want to make it quite clear that God is not a, a, a cruel god who makes you do th- loads of things that are going to so alien to you as a person he's been very good to me he's given me a lot of lovely friends he's given me um lots and lots of uh stuff uh relating to my interests and uh i i'm not married uh <laughs> although i would like to be um um some it doesn't being a christian doesn't keep you uh immune from horrible things uh two and a half years ago uh well three three years ago i uh, lost my job and i fought very very hard to keep it uh, with an appeal i but eventually i was sacked uh completely uh in may uh 2001 and a few days later uh i lost my girlfriend and um i wondered what on earth was going on um but uh with the lord's help 
I, I got through these very difficult times, and uh, and that's what he is. Uh, Christianity can't be in a, used as an escape route. If you if you think that you're you're going to be very disappointed, but he is someone who will walk with you through the through the difficult times. And I don't believe he came to do away with people's culture. I think he just came to add on. So I think you can be. Um, um, if you've got any uh, faiths and uh, and a uh, faith, you can still keep those uh, those a lot of those beliefs and still um, um, and still follow him. Um, I, I feel that I know him. Um, I don't know what he looked like, but I I feel that. The, the the physical Jesus uh, was the, the same as the Jesus that uh, that that rose again. Uh, still got the same uh, characteristics. Um, he had uh, powers. He is a hero, and he had powers uh, that would made the heroes of the Marvel comics envious. But he chose not to use them, uh, and that's a great thing about about Christianity. It's the only religion where god actually came off uh, his throne and came down uh, to scrub floors and to serve uh humanity and uh well that that's uh just just some things to to, to reflect about um it looks very much like i'll be spending a, a christmas day on my own um but i won't be on my own i'll have jesus with me and um uh, yeah just uh, just warmly invite you just to just to explore him uh see uh, a little bit of find out a little bit about him on you can do it on the internet you can, my reading books you can do anything and just see whether um he's my lord uh maybe it's right he should be your lord um as i say I, i'm not here to ram christianity down people's throats um, but it, he worked for me, and I believe I'm nothing special. So he, he I'm sure he can work for you. Um, but I, I do just uh, hope that all of you, whatever you get up to, uh, have a great Christmas. Uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Um, that gives you quite a large range. Um, but I think I thought it would have been very wrong if I just carried on talking about all the things that interest me and not to have uh, mentioned uh, or done one about Jesus. That, that I think that would have been very wrong. Um, so just have a have a great time, and um, I'll uh, hopefully see many of you in the new year. If you think this is helpful uh, to anybody, please forward it. Please tick the like button. And please subscribe if if you'd be so kind. I would love to have some more um, subscribers. But uh, we'll take care over the Christmas period and stay, above all things, stay safe. God bless. Bye.